Welcome back to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we'll look at the shader toy node and go over some of the possible uses for this node. So it's under filter nodes, go down to shader toy. And when you first open it up, by default, it just has these kind of these color rainbow looking thing. If we hit play, we notice they kind of slowly phase to different colors. We have vertical and horizontal lines. Well, what the shader toy is, if we look over here on properties, we have this image shader, a little black triangle here. If we click this, it brings up a whole bunch more options. And this section here under source is really just a bunch of instructions for our graphics card. <clears throat> and so the shader toy just sends instructions to the graphics card on different ways to render um, video, video output. And so by default, this is just the, de the default one when you start the shader toy. But we have, if you click on these presets, we have all these different presets. So we can apply effects to video. Like we've got glitch effects that people use sometimes when they're doing like intro animations on YouTube videos. Um, kaleidoscope, like old video. We can apply this over top of video footage to give it like a grainy old look. We can sharpen video. Um, but we can also render, if we go down to source, we can actually just render, like if we do this bubbles, we see now it's doing bubbles. If we hit play, it's sort of rendering bubbles. <laughs> and then we can apply, on. Uh, in addition to the shader toy, we can apply all these other effects we've looked at, like the um, color correct or some of these different filter nodes to uh, apply effects on top of it. Or it's, a, it's definitely more advanced, but you can get in and modify the actual source code and change uh, the functionality of this preset. Uh, there's also a website where you can go to, I have it pulled up here, shadertoy.com, and people have uploaded their code for different shader toy uh, functionality, and you can actually download and use these uh, in your um, projects. <clears throat> so there's a whole, a wide variety of different things that you can do with this tool. So we're just gonna go through a couple of them. So let's go to source. Um, and actually, like, what you ought to do is just go through every one of these and see if there's just a, a different way, that, a different thing that you can do. Uh, so here's like a cloudy sky. So you might, the sky, <laughs> this sky, no pun intended, the sky is the limit, though, like, really, um, of what you can use this tool for. Um, here's just like a clock, right? It's, oh, this is a clock. <laughs> so some of them are, like, not as... Um, functional as as you might like but some of them like this you know you could modify this and use it as a gunshot flare coming out of the gun or you could have it be you know like the sun like a star exploding in space there's lots of different options you have and so we see once we load it too we have like all these different options for the way that it appears to just within um right uh within like the program so we have all these different ways that we can modify it. And so if we go to a different source, we can do like glowing thing and see what glowing thing looks like. And then glowing thing does not have any options for us. So we just have to modify the source directly if we want to change it. But this is what glowing thing looks like. Um, so obviously, like, I, I can't go through all of these. We've got like plasma two is just like one that just shows like these plasma lines. But go through, load in the shader toy, connect it to the viewer. Look how incredibly simple this is. We just have shader toy connecting to viewer, and we have this really cool output. And it's, I mean, it's not like we downloaded and we're using something that someone else has created. This is just being rendered through mathematics on our computer to our graphics card. So all of this can be used, like the sky that we rendered here, or we can do like star nest, like these stars we can use and have a spaceship flying through here. And it's not like we have to get licensing or anything from the creator of this because the creator is just math um, in this case. So I'm going to stop this video here. Play with the shader toy. Go through like all the different sources. Well, maybe I'm not going to stop quite here just yet. Let's read in. Let's apply like a filter. So I'm going to read in uh, this video that we did earlier. Uh, it's under documents. So this is a, a video that we made in a previous tutorial. And we're going to apply the shader toy in between this video. So, oh, but we're not going to do the... So 
we're going to do an effect on it. So let's just do like a, oh, let's do an effect. Let's try this like fisheye effect. So now we have our video here. I'm going to disable the shader toy by default. So we play, remember this video we made where we, uh, we have this logo that comes in on the screen. Well, now if we have this fisheye, it applies this fisheye effect to it. So it's basically applying a video effect on top of our video footage, and we can change that to a different effect too. So I'm just showing this that it's not just you're not just rendering. So let's check this craziness out. <laughs> so it's not just it's not just creating stuff out of nothing. You can also apply effects to existing video footage. We do it like glitch A, and see we have this kind of glitch going on, um, which would work better if it was applied to just a single object instead of my entire video. But yeah, so play with those play with those two different things. Import a video and play with all the different effects, and then also just look at the different source that you can do. And we'll be using this more uh, as we go deeper into Natron. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. Like and subscribe. Comment below, and we'll catch you on the next one.